Hello everyone and welcome to our second video for the Student Network, this time themed around travel training and independent travel across London. Um, as students progress to the next stage of their education, they're often required to move around a new campus or a new area and that can create some unique challenges for blind and visually impaired students particularly. Um, feedback from our students has revealed that worries about travelling at either different times or through different routes is a reason that they don't take certain opportunities and that obviously is something that we want to work together on to make sure that they can get the most out of their time at university. Um, today we are joined by Mary Collins from Redbridge in the Education and Inclusion Department who offers independent travel training. We have Brian Gordon from TfL Mentoring Scheme and we have Ashika, a student who's gone through travel training and now travels independently. So Ashika, um, what are some of the biggest issues for the I students with regards to travel? Um, I think the main issue for the I students would be confidence. Um, I think if they're in an environment that they're not familiar with, it can cause difficulties. For example, if there's a road closure or diversions, it can be quite difficult for them to navigate their way around that. Okay. Um, so was that the main reason that you wanted to learn to travel independently? Yeah. Okay. And what kind of opportunities um, when you, did you feel perhaps you were missing out on not being able to travel so independently? Um, I wasn't really able to go out with my friends independently that much. Okay. Thank you. Um, so Mary, can you tell us a little bit more about the training that you provide in Redbridge? Yeah, we offer, um, currently offer a person-centred training programme. Um, we concentrate on the students' strengths and weaknesses. So we do an initial assessment um, where we work out, it's on a RAG scheme, so it's the red, amber, green. So the red is it's something that they've not done before, not practised before, or something they're really not confident about trying or achieving, or something they've tried and kind of didn't do very well um, or didn't have that confidence. The amber is something that they may have done, not so confident, and the green is, yeah, they're fine, done it or not done it, but feel confident about doing it. So we tailor the programme around the results of that assessment. Okay, and how long does that normally take for students? Um, the, the actual, I mean, we spend a couple of hours face-to-face um, -face before the training commences. Obviously, there are telephone calls in between that. The actual travel training programme is up to 12 weeks. Um, and obviously, we can sort of tailor that um, to the journeys and look at alternative routes um, as part of the training as well. Okay, and what are some of the key skills that you work on? The key skills, um, biggest one, self-esteem and confidence. Um, and also sort of learning assertiveness, which comes with the confidence. Um, key skills knowing safe places, safe people, who to ask, who not to ask, where to go if there's a crisis or if you don't feel as confident as you might. Um, and sort of monetary skills, time management, um, personal safety, road safety. So all of those things are covered as part of the training. Okay, thank you. Um, so Brian, obviously those services are not um, they differ from borough to borough, so what are some of the services that are available universally across London? Um, well we at uh, TfL we have a travel mentoring team that cover all of London, anywhere the Red Bus goes that's as far as we go. Um, we, it's a complementary service to basically what Mary will be doing and many other councils do. We work with people who have been travel trained. Um, once you're travel trained at various stages of life, you get to a point maybe where you just want those advice and tips and guidance, then to use the, the network of buses and trains and tubes that TfL um, service runs. Therefore, it's learning to how to use the tube, what are the customer service assistants, what can they actually offer you fully, what you should know. It gives you that confidence to, to be able to challenge when things are not running quite correctly and why we want to avoid the diversions and the, and the closures and what to do. And if you know the right thing to do, then you'll always be confident to travel. So we're all about enhancing that experience. We, we'll work with a person on a one-to-one -one basis from the age of 16 upwards, um, around about five sessions. And then looking at our younger, younger students, um, year 10 and going upwards or sorry from the age of 10 we um, offer a bus day that we run on various councils throughout London 
about 14 different councils have them and we work with other stakeholders from the council and from the police and we enact scenarios on buses so it's almost like a hands-on training and that's available to anyone up to any age and uh, it, again it's another opportunity to sort of really see how you can cope and give you the coping mechanisms and just to, you know it's a good way of checking where you are with your independence Excellent. those can all be found on the TfL website. Yeah, if you want to find out more about those, it's on the TfL website or if you contact the Travel Mentor Department through TfL, we'll be able to give the, uh, the right information because it's not always easy to get hold of the right person in a large organisation. So. travel trained um, collectively across Redbridge and the other partnership boroughs that we work with we've travel trained over the last seven and a half nearly eight years probably about eight nine hundred students so we've got many many examples um, but it's just you know one sort of story that sort of sticks in my mind um, apart from Ashika and our other young man that um, was involved in our independent travel training video um, it's it was a, a young lady who was a wheelchair user and she had had the same wheelchair from the age of seven and she was now in college it was not appropriate hadn't met her needs couldn't get the wheel, hold of the wheelchair services we did a whole lot of work before we even did the initial assessment we was involved with the re, um, the wheelchair user uh, the referral service we got her a new all singing all dancing wheelchair and then she was ready to embark on this training and that posed a whole new <laughs> set of problems. Um, actually, we found that although the buses have accessible ramps, they don't actually um, work all the time. And some of them, the angles of them, when, the, when it was wet, it was actually almost impossible to use the wheelchair on. It would mm -hmm. slip and it would then require manual assistance, which with an electric wheelchair is not ideal. Um, we then looked at the whole of her area and alternative bus routes and actually we found a bus route with the new buses the l3 the thomas heffelwick buses so the new sort of based on the old route masters much more accessible and much more space for her to maneuver her wheelchair on and it resulted in her not just even getting to college she was then actually allowed to go out as an article was with her friends and she was spotted around town with one of her students uh, with by one of her tutors and she was just like oh my gosh they've let her loose <laughs> and it was a real absolute massive achievement for us because it wasn't even just it was the environmental barriers that posed the biggest problem <laughs> and we managed working together with lots of different services and professionals we managed to get there so yeah, yeah. yeah those challenges when you face with them particularly if you're on your own they must feel like that's it i can't possibly yeah. do this so that's yeah that's fantastic there, there were around. points where she was on the verge of giving up i mean her her previous wheelchair when she'd gone down a curb the front two wheels had fallen off and this had massively knocked her confidence and she was out with her mum and it was raining it was one of those all the shopping and it's like and she didn't want to actually then leave the house at all so when she got this new chair she was very apprehensive and it's like so we tested it in the grounds of the, of the um, wheelchair services and the only actually true way that we were going to do it was getting out there and actually help, she actually helped do the risk assessment with us so mm -hmm. it was a real practice you know a real practice for her and mm -hmm. for us and actually to see if it was something that was feasible and that practical hands-on approach that really does make a difference it makes a huge things. difference and it, it also reassured mum um, and the family that we were not just taking this as right this is a cost cutting exercise for the local mm -hmm. authority this is really about this young person's future mm -hmm. and her, her independence so it's it, and I think the parents then got that that it's not just a rush job that we do mm -hmm. look at 
absolutely everything. It's had a really holistic approach to the independence because these are transferable life skills. Yes, yes, are needed throughout. Mm. Um, so, Brian, how do you, do you sorry, um, what are some of the ways that you feel that people benefit most from the travel services and travel um, You know, the travel for us, the mentoring starts at the home. It's, we spend quite a lot of time with a lot of people who just need the self-value and self-worth to even come out the door. Mm -hmm. And it's the appreciation of what they go through to get to that bus stop, to get to the station. And we work with that. We work at the pace of the individual. So however far they want to go, if it's going to be a, a journey to the bus stop for the day, that's what we'll work with until they're happy to do that. Before we, we don't push people through a program so much, we work at their pace and we can, we can give basically what's needed. We work with a lot of students who have come to new, <coughs> from visual impairments, who have come to new universities or come into a university and want to learn a journey from their home to, to get to university change of halls, change of buildings. We do we do offer that service as well. Um, and we'll get people from overseas who'll come along and use that service. Now we work with people in mobility using any form of mobility aid that we can authorise them to be allowed on the buses. We show them how to put them on the bus safely. And we'll like what Mary said, if you've got incidents where there's slippage, there's problems with the ramps, we put the reality on them. Our buses now of less than 2% ramp failure. If the, every bus before it's taken out has to have its ramp checked. Every time they change drivers, they have to check the ramp. So if things aren't happening, our customers will know that things haven't been done correctly. Therefore, they can complain, they can make remonstrations in the right places and be effective. So we can alter problems. We take problems to our organisation but we take the problems that we know are an issue rather than a personality mm. or a, well you know this it works for 95 percent of the people mm. you know so we manage expectation as well because a lot of people do have this expectation that this is belongs to them this is it's all about sharing and you know we want to put people in that environment so they're comfortable mm. and help each other and yeah them. and they can help each other thankfully coming in the next however many years our new buses will have two meter spaces for wheelchairs now you know wheelchair users have friends as well <laughs> and there may be two of them in a chair and they can they will be able to travel together so they're the kind of things that we want to build into our future is to give everybody full access to our services and to use us when they can so could I just just add to that as well, that it's actually the more visible the people with additional needs are in the community is the more the attitudinal barriers will change as well. And I think that is also a big barrier for a lot of people is people's, they don't know how to react. And it's actually if you give a young person or an adult that confidence to be a little bit assertive and deal with that situation, you can sometimes change people's mindsets. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah. yeah, you know, I give an example of a lady who hadn't been out of her house for over three years. When I first arrived at her house, it probably wasn't the most pleasant place to be. Mm. Once she got on a scooter and had her house adapted that she could get out and just going for a cup of coffee, mm. suddenly that may have reminded her what her life was like before she, her disability took took over and changed the way she had to do things but also brought her back into her family because a lot of people shut themselves away from their families because they don't want to be a burden and again it comes back to that self-worth so not only do we just mentor and say we want to get you traveling independent we want you to feel independent in your mindset and that you can be part and there is everybody's working together and we can help you to achieve that yeah because it is sometimes the disability becomes the person rather than the person with an additional need and you, you know and it's, it's very much that it's like that's the focus that's all people see and actually if you give someone and concentrate on their abilities and their strengths and actually what you're saying what makes their quality of life that just brings a whole new meaning to just getting up in the mornings and going out there with a purpose even if it is like you say the cup of tea just being a part of the community and having Choice. Yes. Thank you. Um, Ashka, do you have any final words to make 
say to anyone who's perhaps maybe a little hesitant at that moment to travel in front of you? Um, just definitely give it a go because it it's really worth it in the end. It might be a long process, but you'll feel so much better once you've done it. Thank you very much. Um, well, we would love to hear about your experiences and any questions you might have um, with regards to independent travel. So please pop those in the comments below. Um, London Vision is also holding a, a travel information day on Monday the 15th of July. It's free to attend. So if anyone has any more questions or would like to get in contact with some of the services available, that's a great opportunity to do so. I'll pop the full details in the Facebook group just above this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon.